Today I'm going to offer a solution for tracking combat positioning in D&D using just a text editor when you're running your D&D games online. Most of the time when we think about tracking positioning in combat for D&D when we're running games online, we think about virtual tabletops like Roll20 or Fantasy Grounds or Foundry or Albert Rodeo or probably a number of others. But there's actually a way that we can track combat positioning using just the text chat feature of whatever tool we're using to talk to our players. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Now, first of all, if you are using a virtual tabletop already and you really like it and you're not having any problems with it, then this video is probably not for you. If on the other hand, you're finding that for certain battles, it would be nice to be able to quickly whip something up for either an improvised battle or a small battle against easier opponents. Or if you just want to kind of break away from the virtual tabletop and run something closer to theater of the mind, but you still want to offer combat positioning so that the players understand where their characters are seated, then this might be a good tool for you. Also, if you prefer not to use a VTT at all and you would rather just go straight theater of the mind, this can be a way to give some more information to your players so that they have an understanding of who is where without having to break out of the simplicity and the fun of running theater of the mind combat. I recommend using this tool as just one tool in your toolbox for running combat online. I actually like to have a mix of pure theater of the mind combat on one side and virtual tabletops, I prefer Albert Rodeo, but using a virtual tabletop like Albert Rodeo for really complicated battles. But I like to have a range of different tools that I can use given the situation. And the text-based battle map is one tool that sits somewhere pretty close to theater of the mind, but offers a little bit of representation so that players understand where their characters are at any given point. When it comes to tracking combat positioning, there are a few things that are really important. Who's next to who? What is within one move of me? Who's grouped together? Who's in melee with other opponents? Who's within range of my ranged attacks? And who is near what? So if we think about these things, most of them don't require very specific distances. If we're thinking about the high action of our game, the difference between 20 feet and 25 feet really isn't that interesting. Instead, we can think of these things a little bit more abstract. But D&D 5e uses specific distances. So how do we work with that? Well, the idea is that as DMs, we can basically group things in distances that make sense given the distances of D&D. So for example, we have things that are within five feet of each other, right? A lot of the abilities, a lot of the features of D&D are for things that are within five feet. You can attack someone within five feet of you. Any sort of touch attack is within five feet. So that's one distance. Who is exact, who's next to who, right? And if somebody is within five feet and they want to move somewhere else, that means they're going to provoke an attack of opportunity. The next distance is within 25 feet. That's generally speaking within someone's movement. So somebody can move from one place to another if it's within 25 feet. Sometimes it can get to 30, but then you have that stumbling dwarf who only gets about another five feet. So 25 feet is usually pretty easy. The next range is within 50 feet, which is sort of the medium range of ranged attacks. A lot of different range attacks are within 50 or 60 feet. And then you have basically anything that's 100 feet or beyond. And that is really long range. Your, your long bows, very long distance uh, ranged attacks, things like that are within it. So if you try to think of any given situation as what objects are within these four different distances, right next to it, within a move, within about 60 feet and within 100 feet. Those distances work really well when you're doing abstract combat. How do we actually format this in text? If we're, if we're sending this combat tracker in text, what does that actually look like? So I'm actually using a system called Markdown to, to, to use this. And the reason I do is that the tool of choice that I use is Discord. Discord is a fantastic free tool that we can use for our D&D games. And Discord actually understands Markdown text. So if you paste Markdown into Discord, it renders correctly. But you don't actually need a Markdown renderer in order to use this text-based this text-based combat tracker. It will it will work regardless. And it's still the highlighting that we use, the little markdown syntax still makes sense to players when they see it. So we use double asterisks around location names. And you can think of these like a zone. The idea of zones is something I got from the game Fate. And essentially, if you have a complicated space, a complicated area that your battle is taking place, there are features of this location and you can name those features. And we use double asterisks around them to kind of bold those features. So for the battle that I have here, for example, I have a creaky boardwalk is one location. I have a bird skull skiff, which is a small boat that's floating around in a swamp. That's another location. And a dragon kite skiff is another location. So we highlight those locations by putting double stars. We can use underscores for the character names. And that way we can kind of identify who's a character and who's an NPC or a monster very easily just by looking at it. And we do that by putting underscores on either side of the character name. Again, if it renders in, if it renders in markdown, it will italicize that. If it doesn't, we can still see it because the underlines kind of highlight the fact that that's a character. We use plain text just for NPCs and monsters. You don't need to name them. You don't need to put anything around them. You just put them in place. 
We use three dashes to represent a distance of about 25 feet. So if you have one location that's distant from another location, if you put three underscores between them, that kind of shows that, it, that that is within 25 feet. And we show that for these three locations, the Creaky Boardwalk, the Bird Skull Skiff, and the Dragon Kite Skiff, they're all sort of within 25 feet of each other. Anytime you have two names that are right up against one another, like the one line and then a name and then another line, uh, that is that means they're within five feet of each other. That way, any two names that are adjacent to each other in a in a list, that means they're within five feet of each other. Now, you might have a group where you have like four people. You can go ahead and extend that out as we as we have. If you look, you have Bella, Agdon, Longscar Longscarf, Cake, and Torch. They're all grouped up together. If you if you put a single empty line between two people, that means they're not exactly adjacent, but they're pretty close to each other. They're probably within ten or fifteen feet. Any character can kind of move to any other location if it's only within if it's within a move. That's what that three dashes shows. Is a character can get from the Greeky Boardwalk to the Bird Skull Skiff in one move. Now in our case, we might say, yeah, but it's a big fetid swamp in between there. It's going to be difficult terrain. You're not going to be able to make it. But you can make an athletics check to jump from the Creaky Boardwalk to one of the skiffs. Make that check. They get to jump over. They get to make that distance. Now, if a character is adjacent to anybody else and they try to move away, they try to move to a different location, they're going to take an opportunity attack. But we're not going to surprise our players with this. The character knows that they are at risk of an opportunity attack if they're going to move. So we should let the player know that they're at risk. If they are going to move, we could say, just to let you know, you're currently next to Agdon Longscarf. If you want to try to jump over to the Bird Skull Skiff, Agdon's going to get a opportunity attack against you on the way. Now, one cool trick is we can track the damage done to the monsters or NPCs directly in the same list. I do it by just adding some text directly next to it with, with the number. So we could say that Agdong Longscarf takes a longsword attack. He takes seven damage. Then he gets shot with a firebolt for another five. We just add it up and we just add up the damage. Even though we can continually paste this combat tracker into Discord, uh, they can see how much damage that monster has taken. This is information that's available to the players anyway. So we're not showing them anything they wouldn't know. And that's one of the advantages of adding damage up instead of tracking hit points down. So as we're using the combat tracker, we have some kind of text editor. I like to do it in, in Notion, but you could do it in any text editor of your choice and keep track of that on the side. And then periodically we take and copy this entire section and we paste it into Discord. I'm going to paste it into my Discord server here. I paste that in and immediately the players can see, and you can see how it rendered in Markdown. Ah, there's a creaky boardwalk. It has Kolshek and Ori. They're on the boardwalk, but they're separated from everybody else. Bella, Cake, and Tarch are all adjacent to Agdong Longscarf. And then we have two bird skull skiffs, both highlighted, that show that there's a Herringon sniper, the two different Herringon snipers, one of which who took four damage, and a her one rower, a Herringon rower. And then there's a dragon's kite skiff as well. So now we have three different locations. We have groups of monsters. If Kolshek says, Ooh, I wanna, I'm going to go leap over from the creaky boardwalk to the bird skull skiff. All we have to do is cut him from here and paste him over here, assuming he made it. And now he's adjacent to him. If he jumps right in him, we might throw him right in the middle so that he's right in the middle of those snipers, which is exactly where Kolshek wants to be. So it's very easy for us to add or move things around. We just copy and paste text up in this line, and it gives an idea of where everybody is positioned. So the combat tracker is a really fast way of showing positioning that we can use online. We can use it in Discord. We can use it in any text editor or any text chat program that we're using with our players. So why do we want to use this? Well, it's very fast to set up. It requires no other external tools other than usually the collaboration tool that we're using with our players. And it, it gives players enough of a general idea of where they're positioned that they don't constantly have to ask like, well, exactly where am I? And who's next to who? I've, you know, It's easy for players to lose track. It's easy for us to lose track of who's where anybody else is, which is typically where we go to a virtual tabletop. But the advantage is this is way faster and we can improvise battles with this very quickly. It works particularly well for small battles, for battles that aren't particularly complicated and for improvised battles that we weren't expecting to run. So I like to think of the text-based combat tracker as one tool in our toolbox for tracking combat online. I don't think that this is a pure replacement for virtual tabletops. And again, if you just like using VTTs and it's the only thing you wanna use, that's, that's absolutely great. But if you want a fast tool that you can use that's somewhere between theater of the mind and something more complicated like a, like a virtual tabletop, the text-based combat tracker is one way to do it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, you can help me out by subscribing to the Sly Flourish newsletter, supporting me directly on Patreon, picking up any of my books, or subscribing to my videos on YouTube. Thank you very much and have a great day.